Losing time, I'm fading fast I just wanna make it last Try to let go of the past I close my eyes, embrace the blast Sleepless nights and headaches stack Restlessness to hell and back What's my purpose, what do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack And sometimes you just gotta believe There's something that'll Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science. If you hear rumbling in the background, it's a thunderstorm that's sort of going on. What I wanted to cover in this episode, um, and I want to cover it in a lot of detail. One can go into quite a lot of detail. One can also go into in, uh, refer to the discovery, which I'm not going to do. I just want to sort of cover it lightly. But um, every now and then I sort of come across commentary that is just, you know, people agree with it, but it's just not um, not quite as simple or as black and white as people seem to think it is. And so an example of that is where you sort of say, was Anadarka right to fire Nicole Kessinger? And I think if I would ask you that question, how would you answer it? I'm guessing most of you would say yes, that she was right to be fired, right? Right? So, the way that I want to look at this is by just taking you guys to a single news article, uh, just one news article. Like I said, there's quite a lot one can do with this discussion. I've researched it in quite a lot of detail um, in one of the two Facebooks. So I'm not going to go into that kind of detail here. But what I want to sort of address is if you're one of those people that think Nicole Kessinger deserved what she got and or didn't didn't get what she deserved but also that she should have she should have been fired i just want to draw your attention to another to this article from cpr news and i hope when you if you're one of those people that just have this thing against nicole kessinger i'm not saying she's innocent but if you're one of those people with maybe just consider what, what you're going to be hearing here, that there is a different way of thinking about things. Okay. So in this article, it's about former Anadarka employees complaining about a culture of male sexual gratification, bullying, and retaliation. Right? It's a culture of male sexual gratification at Anadarka, not female sexual gratification, male sexual gratification. And when you go through this article, it starts off just referring to Anadarka as Colorado's largest oil and gas driller, which has a culture of treating women as sexual playthings who are present at work merely for men's sexual gratification. Now, you might think this is totally irrelevant to Chris Watts, but it's not. One thing that I think is sorely lacking in analysis is you never really hear about Anadarka. You never never really hear about a male-dominated workplace. You never really hear about what it could be like being a woman in a male-dominated workplace. And I think something that a lot of women just don't realize or just haven't thought about is this woman in this male-dominated workplace probably got a lot of attention from her male co co-workers. And although this is kind of in the discovery, and although I'm not going to refer to it directly, I'm just hoping that you know what I'm talking about, and that if you want to go and check it, you can go and check it. But one of Chris Watts's colleagues did say that he, he noticed um, Chris Watts and Nicole Kessinger in the workplace, so, sort of being very close to one another in the hallway. And what, what that starts to allude to is the possibility of his colleagues being aware that he was having an affair. 
also her colleagues, her male colleagues, aware that maybe she was having an affair with him or something was going on. And that's, to me, the big unspoken story. Everyone is very angry with Nicole Kessinger and, um, you know, it's not wrong, it's not abnormal, it's not strange to be upset with an adulteress. But you've also got to ask, what about other people that were aware of what was going on? Were they, were they actually encouraging it? Were they talking excitedly at the office, kind of in a gossip way? I'm talking about the men. Were the, were the men sort of patting Chris Watts on the back and saying, you know, how are things going? Were they kind of condoning what he was doing? Were they kind of egging him on? Were they kind of, you know, treating him almost like a celebrity because of his success with this co-worker of theirs, which maybe they also found attractive? But he was the one who was getting the goal, you know, and they, they weren't. And so if you think of it in that way, it's, it's very, very, very serious. We're talking about people who, who have been, I won't say complicit, but they were, they may have been aware of what he was doing and encouraging him and kind of give, giving him the sense that of almost sort of permissiveness. And you, you might say, well, that's reading too much into it. But if we go through the rest of this article, and it talks about a culture of treating women as sexual playthings at Anadarko, at this company where both of them worked. I mean, what are we really talking about? Now, I get the counter-argument. The counter-argument is that this information isn't definitely true. It's hearsay. It is someone who made a complaint. It may not be true. But what if it is? In a letter dated October 30th, 2017, obtained by CPR and verified by a former company senior executive, it was written by attorneys for Robin Olson, a former communications professional at Anadarko. The alleged top Anadarko executives had sex in the Denver office during business hours and then retaliated and bullied Olson, who witnessed and reported the incidents. Are you telling me something at this high level didn't filter down to other staff where other staff were talking about it. The letter states that during around October, sorry, around 2012, Olson could hear then Vice President Scott Moore having sex with a co-worker in the office next to hers. And so when somebody complained, Moore retaliated. So the whole idea was when this sort of stuff happens, you don't say anything. You let it happen. Later in 2015, Olson claims the letter, in the letter, uh, she could hear another Vice President, Brad Holly, now CEO of Whiting Petroleum, carrying out an affair with a different co-worker. And what's interesting is not so much these allegations, but how Anna Darker responded to them. And you can kind of get the sense that they respond to it as kind of a PR scenario, that they're treating it as a PR incident, right? And so one of the things CPR says is regarding the allegations against Moore, the statement reads, and I think this is a statement from Anna Darko, there was no violation of company policy, the relationship was consensual, and there was no direct reporting relationship. Now think about that in the context of Chris Watts and Nicole Kessinger. If you're one of those people that said she absolutely deserved to lose her job. And I and I can kind of hear the sort of consternation, you know, where you say, well, but it's because of her that, that, that the children were murdered, because of her, all that kind of thing. That I think that's a separate argument. You can make that argument. Um, but what about these people? What about if one of these company people had an affair and the same thing happened? Would, would it have been their fault, you know, having an affair at the office and then somebody did that? Should they have expected it to have happened? The part that I'm trying to sort of isolate here 
is that affairs were going on all the time, infidelities were going on all the time, and there was no kind of accountability, especially amongst the men. And the response of Anadarka when it happened was to say, well, it's, it's not a violation of company policy. And some of the comments that I've heard people talking about, they say, well, you know, companies will say that, you know, you're violating company policy if you have an affair with a co-worker. Well, not at Anadarko, not according to this statement. As long as it was a consensual relationship, it didn't matter who it was with. If there was no direct reporting relationship, it was fine, according to this information. The statement even goes too far as to say, we recognize the relationship was disruptive for some of our employees and showed poor judgment. But they're sort of kind of condoning it. If we go further down the same article, it's a really good article by, by CPR. It refers to an industry titan besieged by negative publicity. And the writer says, it's hard to overstate Anadarko's place at the top of Colorado's oil and gas industry. Anadarko is not just this company. It is the most powerful company in Weld County, bar none, and one of the most powerful in Colorado. It uh, refers to the Houston-based multinational driller dominates the state's energy and political landscape, dominates Colorado's energy and political landscape. It's not just the energy infrastructure, the energy economy, also the political landscape. Pumping 39 million barrels in 2018, that was the year of the Watts family murders, and the most of any company by far. That is giving you a sense of how powerful this company is. They're not going to be dictated to by anything or anyone. It's also among the largest campaign contributions, more than 18 million in donations to Colorado groups since 2014. I've looked at other uh, information that's far more than that, but the point is they have political power. They're able to influence outcomes pol politically and then it refers to this company has faced a staggering trail of controversies right and these controversies have happened recently and these controversies are referred to uh, and, and they go like to January 2017 not a long time ago three years ago today, but really not a long time ago. 30,000 gallons of oil spilled from a Weld County well. Then just three, four months after that, April 2017, an uncapped flow line from one of the company's wells led to a deadly explosion that killed two men in a residence in Firestone. It literally blew up the house. People died in the house. And it was said that that was... Um, negligence you know from from a, a well line that hadn't been closed one month later in May 2017 a contractor was killed in another explosion at a well pad in Mead and then a year later the Chris Watts family murders and Watts buries his wife on a Anadarko property and he puts his children in nearby oil tanks and one's got to ask was did, did, did Watts do this because he sort of noticed all this other negligence going on and how it was either covered up or no one got into trouble over it? Did Watts know this or realize this? Did he see how Anadarka dealt with negative publicity? Did he see how they... Was that, did that influence him? It's a question. And w within this context, they also refer to Watts having an affair with an employee from Anadarko, a, a contractor. But it's within the context of a lot of 
unacceptable controversies, huge oil spills, deadly explosions, a contractor killed in another explosion. I mean, this is just a summary. It goes back further. It, it, it's, this is just a small little glimpse at, at, at everything. To go further through the, uh, the article in CPR, it refers to Anadarko's um, vice president having intercourse a total of six to eight times during business hours. And then if we go to another page, it just refers to this is this is the re response to somebody saying this is happening. Is that you then have a counter narrative going on where where um, the the boss retaliates by publicizing. It's kind of like using PR, using publicity around the office to get somebody into trouble. So someone who was cheating or having sex in the office, who was reported by someone else, then got that person into trouble, someone who was higher up. And then even prevented her from doing her job by refusing to email her, call her, or speak to her. Basically locking her out of her own job. And if you go to another page, it refers to 16 employees that were unsettled by these visits, which I guess was se sexual in nature. And it's, it refers to the whole team seemed aware of the affair. And one must just ask, was that not the case with Watson Kessinger? If it was the case, were they asked about Were they asked, did you know that Chris Watts was having an affair? How did they respond? Did the company say to them, don't say anything about it. But, but what if Chris Watts's co-workers did know about the affair and, and said nothing? What if they did know for the, bear in mind they were with him the five weeks that Shanann was in North Carolina. They know she's in North Carolina. They know the kids are in North Carolina. They are at work. Nicole Kessinger is at work. They are at work. Chris Watts is at work. Did they say anything? And then when Shanann disappeared and the children disappeared and they died, did they say anything then? Did they think that Chris Watts had something to do with it? If they did think he had something to do with it, did anyone say anything? Were they more responsible to say something or were they as responsible to say something as Nicole Kessinger? And so another thing I just want to point out is one of these executives that were implicated in this affair, he tried to save the job of the woman he was alleged to be having the affair with. He was trying to save her job. And so if you look at this situation and you say, Nicole Kessinger deserved to lose her job, really, in the context of this, and you can say, well, yes, no, Nicole Kessinger is totally different because of her, all these people died. Actually, all Nicole Kessinger did was she had an affair. I'm not trying to minimize the affair. I'm trying to put it into context and I'm simply trying to show you that what about men having affairs at work all the time and covering them up and the women who report them get into trouble and get kicked out of the office what about culture, cu cultures of sort of sexual nature in the workplace leading to affairs at the workplace leading to people doing what Chris Watts and Nicole Kessinger did. Can one not look at the culture at the workplace and say, if that culture wasn't there, if there was more of an accountable culture, would this have happened? So if you're interested in that kind of analysis, go and check out uh, Silver Fox, available on Amazon Kindle. There's also the audio book 
on Patreon and also I'm looking doing some analysis of the Killing of John Bonnet podcast on Patreon, so check that out. And then stay tuned to this channel for more, more coverage and analysis of the disappearance of Madeleine McCann. I'm doing a series debunking that. I've got, I think there's one episode to go, but there's a lot in that episode. So uh, if you're interested in that sort of um, analysis, please subscribe to this channel, like, share, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next time.